Ariel by Sylvia Plath. Read by me, Jordan Barclay, because I want to. Alright guys, let's dive in. Morning Song Love set you going like a fat gold watch. The midwife slapped your foot soles, and your bald cry took its place among the elements. Our voices echo, magnifying your arrival. New statue in a drafty museum. Your nakedness shadows our safety. We stand round blankly as walls. I'm no more your mother than the cloud that distills a mirror to reflect its own slow and fascinant at the wind's hand. All night your mouth breath flickers among the flat pink roses. I wake to listen. A far sea moves in my ear. One cry, and I stumble from bed, cow heavy and floral in my Victorian nightgown. Your mouth opens clean as a cat's. The window square whitens and swallows its dull stars. And now you try your handful of notes. The clear vowels rise like balloons. End of morning song. The Couriers The word of a snail on a plate of leaf? It is not mine. Do not accept it. Acetic acid in a sealed tin? Do not accept it. It is not genuine. A ring of gold with the sun in it? Lies. Lies and a grief. Frost on a leaf. The immaculate cauldron. Talking and crackling all to itself on the top of each of nine black alps. A disturbance in mirrors. The sea shattering its gray one. Love. Love. My season. End of the Couriers. The Rabbit Catcher. It was a place of force, the wind gagging my mouth with my own blown hair, tearing off my voice, and the sea blinding me with its lights, the lives of the dead, unreeling in it, spreading like oil. I tasted the malignity of the gorse, its black spikes, the extreme unction of its yellow candle flowers. They had an efficiency, a great beauty, and were extravagant, like torture. There was only one place to get to. Simmering, perfumed, the paths narrowed into the hollow, and the snares almost effaced themselves. Zeros, shutting on nothing. Set close, like birth pangs, the absence of shrieks made a hole in the hot day, a vacancy. The glassy light was a clear wall, the thickets quiet. I felt a still busyness, an intent. I felt hands round a tea mug, dull, blunt, ringing the white china. How they awaited him, those little deaths. They waited like sweethearts. They excited him. And we, too, had a relationship. Tight wires between us, pegs too deep to uproot, and a mind like a ring sliding shut on some quick thing. The constriction killing me also. End of the Rabbit Catcher. Thalidomide. Oh, half moon, half brain, luminosity, negro, mask like a white, your dark, amputations crawl and appall, spidery, unsafe. What glove, what leatheriness has protected me from that shadow? The indelible buds, knuckles at shoulder blades, the faces that shove into being, dragging the loppet blood call of absences. All night I carpenter a space for the thing I am given. A love of two wet eyes and a screech. White spit of indifference. The dark fruits revolve and fall. The glass creaks across. The image flees and aborts like dropped mercury. End of Thalidomide. The Applicant. First, are you our sort of person? Do you wear a glass eye, false teeth or a crutch, a brace or a hook, rubber breasts or a rubber crotch, stitches to show something's missing? No? No? Then how can we give you a thing? Stop crying. Open your hand. Empty? Empty. Here is a hand to fill it and willing to bring teacups and roll away headaches and do whatever you tell it. 
Will he marry it? It is guaranteed to thumb shut your eyes at the end and dissolve of sorrow. We make new stock from the salt. I notice you are stark naked. How about this suit? Black and stiff, but not a bad fit. Will you marry it? It is waterproof, shadowproof, proof against fire and bombs through the roof. Believe me, they'll bury you in it. Now your head, excuse me, is empty. I have the ticket for that. Come here, sweetie, out of the closet. Well, what do you think of that? Naked as paper to start, but in twenty-five years she'll be silver. In fifty, gold. A living doll, everywhere you look. It can sew, it can cook, it can talk, talk, talk. It works. There's nothing wrong with it. You have a hole. It's a poultice. You have an eye. It's an image. My boy, it's your last resort. Will you marry it? Marry it? Marry it? End of the applicant. Barren woman. Empty. I echo to the least footfall. Museum without statues. Grand with pillars, porticos, rotundas. In my courtyard, a fountain leaps and sinks back into itself. None hearted and blind to the world, marble lilies exhale their pallor like scent. I imagine myself with a great public. Mother of a white Nike and several bald-eyed Apollos. Instead, the dead injure me with attentions, and nothing can happen. The moon lays a hand on my forehead, blank-faced and mum as a nurse. End of Baron Woman. Lady Lazarus. I have done it again. One year in every ten, I imagine it, a sort of walking miracle. My skin bright as a Nazi lampshade, my right foot a paperweight, my face a featureless fine Jew linen. Peel off the napkin, oh my enemy! Do I terrify? The nose, the eye pits, the full set of teeth. The sour breath will vanish in a day. Soon, soon the flesh, the grave cave eight will be at home on me, and I a smiling woman. I am only thirty. And like the cat, I have nine times to die. This is number three. What a trash to annihilate each decade! What a million filaments! The peanut-crunching crowd shoves in to see them unwrap me hand and foot. The big striptease, gentlemen, ladies, these are my hands, my knees. I may be skin and bone. Nevertheless, I am the same identical woman. The first time it happened, I was ten. It was an accident. The second time, I meant to last it out and not come back at all. I rocked shut as a seashell. They had to call and call and pick the worms off me like sticky pearls. Dying is an art, like everything else. I do it exceptionally well. I do it so it feels like hell. I do it so it feels real. I guess you could say I have a call. It's easy enough to do it in a cell. It's easy enough to do it and stay put. It's the theatrical comeback in a broad day, to the same place, the same face, the same brute amused shout, a miracle. That knocks me out. There is a charge for the eyeing of my scars. There is a charge for the hearing of my heart. It really goes, and there is a charge, a very large charge, for a word or a touch or a bit of blood. Or a piece of my hair or my clothes, so so, her doctor, so so, her enemy. I am your opus. I am your valuable, the pure gold baby that melts to a shriek. I turn and burn. Do not think I underestimate your great concern. Ash, ash, you poke and stir, flesh, bone. There is nothing there. A cake of soap. A wedding ring, a gold filling. Her God, her Lucifer. Beware, beware! Out of the ash I rise with my red hair, and I eat men like air. End of Lady Lazarus. Tulips. The tulips are too excitable. It is winter here. Look how white everything is. 
how quiet, how snowed in. I am learning peacefulness, lying by myself quietly. As the light lies on these white walls, this bed, these hands, I am nobody. I have nothing to do with explosions. I have given my name and my day clothes up to the nurses and my history to the anesthetist and my body to the surgeons. They have propped my head between the pillow and the sheet cuff like an eye between two white lids that will not shut. Stupid pupil. It has to take everything in. The nurses pass and pass. They are no trouble. They pass the way gulls pass inland in their white caps, doing things with their heads, one just the same as another. It is impossible to tell how many there are. My body is a pebble to them. They tend it as water. Tends to the pebbles it must run over, smoothing them gently. They bring me numbness in their bright needles. They bring me sleep. Now I have lost myself. I am sick of baggage. My patent leather overnight case like a black pill box. My husband and child smiling out of the family photo. Their smiles catch onto my skin like smiling hooks. I have let things slip, a thirty-year-old cargo boat stubbornly hanging on to my name and address. They have swabbed me clear of my loving associations. Scared and bare on the green plastic pillow trolley, I watched my tea set, my bureaus of linen, my books sink out of sight, and the water went over my head. I am a nun now. I have never been so pure. I didn't want any flowers. I only wanted to lie with my hands turned up and be utterly empty. How free it is. You have no idea how free. The peacefulness is so big it dazes you. And it asks nothing. A name tag? A few trinkets. It is what the dead close on. Finally. I imagine them shutting their mouths on it like a communion tablet. The tulips are too red in the first place. They hurt me. Even through the gift paper I could hear them breathe, lightly, through their white swaddlings, like an awful baby. Their redness talks to my wound, it corresponds. They are subtle, they seem to float, though they weigh me down, upsetting me with their sudden tongues and their color, a dozen red lead sinkers around my neck. Nobody watched me before, now I am watched. The tulips turn to me and the window behind me where once a day the light slowly widens and slowly thins. And I see myself, flat, ridiculous, a cut paper shadow between the eye of the sun and the eyes of the tulips. And I have no face. I have wanted to efface myself. The vivid tulips eat my oxygen. Before they came, the air was calm enough, coming and going, breath by breath, without any fuss. Then the tulips filled it up like a loud noise. Now the air snags and eddies round them the way a river snags and eddies round a sunken, rust-red engine. They concentrate my attention that was happy playing and resting without committing itself. The walls, also, seem to be warming themselves. The tulips should be behind bars like dangerous animals. They are opening like the mouth of some great African cat. And I am aware of my heart. It opens and closes. Its ball of red blooms out of sheer love of me. The water I taste is warm and salt like the sea. And comes from a country far away as health. End of tulips. A secret. A secret? A secret. How superior. You are blue and huge, a traffic policeman, holding up one palm. A difference between us? I have one eye, you have two. The secret is stamped on you, faint, undulant watermark. Will it show in the black detector? Will it come out, wavery, indelible, true, through the African giraffe in its edony greenery, the Moroccan hippopotamus? They stare from a square, stiff frill. They are for export. One a full, the other a full. A secret, an extra amber brandy finger, roosting and cooing. 
you, you. Behind two eyes in which nothing is reflected but monkeys. A knife that can be taken out to pare nails, to leave the dirt. It won't hurt. An illegitimate baby, that big blue head, how it breathes in the bureau drawer. Is that lingerie, pet? It smells of salt cod. You had better stab a few cloves in an apple, make a sachet, or do away with the bastard. Do away with it altogether. No, no, it is happy there, but it wants to get out. Look, look, it is wanting to crawl. My God, there goes the stopper. The car is in the place de la Concorde. Watch out, a stampede, a stampede. Horns twirling, a jungle gutturals, an exploded bottle of stout, slack foam in the lap. You stumble out, dwarf baby. The knife in your back. I feel weak. The secret is out. End of a secret. The jailer. My night sweats grease his breakfast plate. The same placard of blue fog is wheeled into position, with the same trees and headstones. Is that all he can come up with, the rattler of keys? I have been drugged and raped. Seven hours knocked out of my right mind, into a black sack, where I relax, ferretus or cat, lever of his wet dreams. Something is gone. My sleeping capsule, my red and blue zeppelin, drops me from a terrible altitude. Carapace smashed. I spread into the beaks of birds. Oh, little gimlets! What holes this papery day is already full of! He has been burning me with cigarettes, pretending I am a negress with pink paws. I am myself. That is not enough. The fever trickles and stiffens in my hair. My ribs show. What have I eaten? Lies and smiles. Surely the sky is not that color. Surely the grass should be rippling. All day, gluing my church of burnt matchsticks, I dream of someone else entirely. And he, for this subversion, hurts me. He, with his armory of fakery, his high, cold masks of amnesia. How did I get here? Indeterminate criminal. I die with variety, hung, starved, burned, hooked. I imagine him impotent as distant thunder, in whose shadow I have eaten my ghost ration. I wish him dead or away. That it seems is the impossibility. That being free, what would the dark do without fevers to eat? What would the light do without eyes to knife? What would he do? Do. Do without me. End of the jailer. Cut, for Susan O'Neill Rowe. What a thrill! My thumb instead of an onion. The top quite gone, except for a sort of hinge of skin, a flap like a hat, dead white. Then that red plush, little pilgrim, the Indian's axe to your scalp, the turkey waddle carpet rolls straight from your heart. I step on it, clutching my bottle of pink fizz. A celebration this is. Out of a gap, a million soldiers run, red coats, every one. Whose side are they on? Oh, my homunculus! I am ill. I have taken a pill to kill the thin, papery feeling, saboteur, kamikaze man. The stain on your gauze Ku Klux Klan, babushka, darkens and tarnishes. And when the bald pulp of your heart confronts its small mill of silence, how you jump, tree-panned veteran, dirty girl, thumb stump. End of cut. Elm, for Ruth Fainlight. I know the bottom, she says. I know it with my great tap root. It is what you fear. I do not fear it. I have been there. Is it the sea you hear in me? Its dissatisfactions, or the voice of nothing that was your madness? Love is a shadow. How you lie and cry after it. Listen, these are its hooves. It has gone off like a horse. All night I shall gallop thus 
impetuously, till your head is a stone, your pillow a little turf, echoing, echoing. Or shall I bring you the sound of poisons? This is rain now, this big hush, and this is the fruit of it, tin white like arsenic. I have suffered the atrocity of sunsets, scorched to the root, my red filaments burn and stand, a hand of wires. Now I break up in pieces that fly about like clubs. A wind of such violence will tolerate no bystanding. I must shriek. The moon also is merciless. She would drag me cruelly, being barren. Her radiance scathes me, or perhaps I have caught her. I let her go. I let her go diminished and flat, as after radical surgery. How your bad dreams possess and endow me. I am inhabited by a cry. Nightly it flaps out, looking, with its hooks, for something to love. I am terrified by this dark thing that sleeps in me. All day I feel its soft, feathery turnings, its malignity. Clouds pass and disperse. Are those the faces of love? Those pale irretrievables? Is it for such I agitate my heart? I am capable of more knowledge. What is this, this face so murderous in its strangle of branches? Its snaky acids hiss. It petrifies the will. These are the isolate, slow faults that kill, that kill, that kill. End of Elm The night dances. A smile fell in the grass, irretrievable. And how will your night dances lose themselves? In mathematics? Such pure leaps and spirals. Surely they travel the world forever. I shall not entirely sit emptied of beauties. The gift of your small breath, the drenched grass smell of your sleeps. Lilies, lilies. Their flesh bears no relation. Cold folds of ego, the kala and the tiger embellishing itself spots, and a spread of hot petals. The comets have such a space to cross, such coldness, forgetfulness, so your gestures flake off, warm and human, then their pink light bleeding and peeling. Through the black amnesias of heaven, why am I given these lamps, these planets, falling like blessings, like flakes, six-sided, white on my eyes, my lips, my hair, touching and melting nowhere end of the night dances the detective what was she doing when it blew in over the seven hills the red furrow the blue mountain was she arranging cups it is important was she at the window listening in that valley the train shrieks echo like souls on hooks that is the valley of death though the cows thrive in our garden, the lies were shaking out their moist skills, and the eyes of the killer moving slug-like and sidelong, unable to face the fingers, those egotists. The fingers were tamping a woman into a wall, a body into a pipe, and the smoke rising. This is the smell of years burning here in the kitchen. These are the deceits, tacked up like family photographs. And this is a man. Look at his smile. The death weapon? No one is dead. There is no body in the house at all. There is the smell of polish. There are plush carpets. There is the sunlight, playing its blades. Bored hoodlum in a red room, where the wireless talks to itself like an elderly relative. Did it come like an arrow? Did it come like a knife? Which of the poisons is it? Which of the nerve curlers, the convulsors, did it electrify? This is a case without a body. The body does not come into it at all. It is a case of vaporization. The mouth first, its absence reported in the second year. It had been insatiable and in punishment was hung out like brown fruit to wrinkle and dry. The breasts next. These were harder, two white stones. The milk came yellow, then blue and sweet as water. There was no absence of lips. There were two children, but their bones showed, and the moon smiled. Then the dry wood, 
the gates, the brown motherly furrows, the whole estate. We walk on air, Watson. There is only the moon, embalmed in phosphorus. There is only a crow in a tree. Make notes. End of the detective. Ariel. Stasis in darkness, then the substanceless blue, poor of toy and distances. God's lioness, how one we grow, pivot of heels and knees. The furrow splits and passes, sister to the brown arc of the neck I cannot catch. Nigger eye berries cast dark hooks, black sweet blood mouthfuls. Shadows, something else hauls me through air, thighs, hair, flakes from my heels. White Godiva, I unpeel, dead hands, dead stringencies. And now I foam to wheat, a glitter of seas. The child's cry melts in the wall, and I am the arrow. The deer that flies suicidal, at one with a drive into the red eye. The Cauldron of Morning. End of Ariel. Death and Co. Two. Of course there are two. It seems perfectly natural now. The one who never looks up, whose eyes are littered and bald like Blake's, who exhibits the birthmarks that are his trademark. The scald scar of water, the nude verdigree of the condor. I am red meat. His beak claps sidewise. I am not his yet. He tells me how badly I photograph. He tells me how sweet the babies look in their hospital icebox. A simple frill at the neck. Then the flutings of their Lonian death gowns. Then two little feet. He does not smile or smoke. The other does that. His hair long and plossive. Bastard masturbating a glitter. He wants to be loved. I do not stir. The frost makes a flower. The dew makes a star. The dead bell. The dead bell. Somebody's done for. End of Death and Co. Magi. The abstracts hover like dull angels. Nothing so vulgar as a nose or an eye, bossing the ethereal blanks of their face ovals. Their whiteness bears no relation to laundry, snow, chalk, or such like. They're the real thing, all right. The good, the true, solitary and pure as boiled water, loveless as the multiplication table, while the child smiles into thin air. Six months in the world, and she is able to rock on all fours like a padded hammock. For her, the heavy notion of evil attending a cot is less than a belly ache, and love the mother of milk. No theory. They mistake their star, these papery godfolk. They want the crib of some lamp-headed Plato. Let them astound his heart and their merit. What girl ever flourished in such company? End of Magi. Lesbos. Viciousness in the kitchen. The potatoes hiss. It is all Hollywood, windowless. The fluorescent light wincing on and off like a terrible migraine. Coy paper strips for doors. Stage curtains. A window's frizz. And I... Love am a pathological liar, and my child, look at he, face down on the floor, little unstrung puppet, kicking to disappear. Why, she is a schizophrenic, her face red and white, a panic. You have stuck her kittens outside your window, in a sort of cement well, where they crap and puke and cry and she can't hear. You say you can't stand her. The bastard's a girl. You who have blown your tubes like a bad radio clear of voices in history, the staticky noise of the new. You say I should drown the kittens, their smell. You say I should drown my girl. She'll cut her throat at ten if she's mad at two. The baby smiles, fat snail. From the polished lozenges of orange linoleum, you could eat him. He's a boy. You say your husband is just no good to you. His Jew mama guards his sweet sex like a pearl. You have one baby. I have two. I should sit on a rock off Cornwall and comb my hair. I should wear tiger pants. I should have an affair. We should meet in another life. We should meet in air. Me and you. 
Meanwhile, there's a stink of fat and baby crap. I'm doped and thick from my last sleeping pill. The smog of cooking, the smog of hell. Floats our heads, two venomous opposites. Our bones, our hair. I call you Oifen, Oifen. You are ill. The sun gives you ulcers. The wind gives you TB. Once you were beautiful. In New York, Hollywood, the men said, Through? Gee, baby, you were rare. You acted, acted, acted for the thrill. The impotent husband slumps out for a coffee. I try to keep him in. An old pole for the lighting. The acid baths. The sky falls off of you. He lumps it down the plastic cobbled hill. Flogs trolley. The spikes are blue. The blue spikes spill, splitting like quartz into a million bits. Oh jewel. Oh valuable. That night, the moon dragged its blood bag, sick animal, up over the harbor lights, and then grew normal, hard and apart and white. The scale sheen on the sand scared me to death. We kept picking up handfuls, loving it, working it like dough, a mulatto body, the silk grits. A dog picked up your doggy husband. They went on. Now I am silent, hate up to my neck. Thick, thick. I do not speak. I am packing the hard potatoes like good clothes. I am packing the babies. I am packing the sick cats. Oh, vase of acid, it is love you are full of. You know who you hate. He is hugging this ball and chain down by the gate. That opens to the sea, where it drives in white and black, then spews it back. Every day you fill him with soul stuff like a pitcher. You are so exhausted. Your voice my earring, flapping and sucking, blood-loving, bat. That is that. That is that. You peer from the door, sad hag. Every woman's a whore. I can't communicate. I see your cute decoy. Close on you like the fist of a baby. Or an anemone, that sea, sweetheart, that kleptomaniac. I am still raw. I say I may be back. You know what lies are for. Even in your zen heaven, we shan't meet. End of Lesbos. The other. You come in late, wiping your lip. What did I leave untouched on the doorstep? White Nike, streaming between my walls? Smilingly, blue lighting assumes, like a meat hook, the burden of his parts. The police love you. You confess everything. Bright hair, shoe black, old plastic. Is my life so intriguing? Is it for this you widen your eye rings? Is it for this the air motes depart? They are not air motes. They are corpuscles. Open your handbag. What is that bad smell? It is your knitting, busily, hooking itself to itself. It is your sticky candies. I have your head on my wall. Naval cords, blue, red, and lucent, shriek from my belly like arrows, and these I ride. Oh, moon glow, oh, sick one, the stolen horses, the fornications, circle a womb of marble. Where are you going that you suck breath like mileage? So first adulteries grieve in a dream. Cold glass, how you insert yourself between myself and myself. I scratch like a cat. The blood that runs is dark fruit, an effect, a cosmetic. You smile. No, it is not fatal. End of the other. Stopped dead. A squeal of brakes, or is it a birth cry? And here we are, hung out over the dead drop, uncle, pants factory fatso, millionaire. And you out cold beside me in your chair, the wheels, Two rubber grubs bite their sweet tails. Is that Spain down there? Red and yellow, two passionate hot metals. Writhing and sighing, what sort of a scenery is it? It isn't England, it isn't France, it isn't Ireland. It's violent. We are here on a visit, with a goddamn baby screaming off somewhere. There's always a bloody baby in the air. I'd call it a sunset. But whoever heard a sunset yowl like that? You were sunk in your seven chins, still as a ham. Who do you think I am, uncle? 
Uncle? Sad Hamlet with a knife? Where do you stash your life? Is it a penny? A puggle? Your soul? Your soul? I'll carry it off like a rich pretty girl. Simply open the door and step out of the car and live in Gibraltar on air. On air. End of Stopped Dead. Poppies in October for Helder and Suzette Macedo. Even the sun clouds this morning cannot manage such skirts, nor the woman in the ambulance whose red heart blooms through a coat so astoundingly. A gift, a love gift, utterly unasked for by a sky palely and flamily igniting its carbon monoxide by eyes dulled to a halt under bowlers. Oh my god, what am I that these late mouths should cry open in a forest of froth, in a dawn of cornflowers? End of Poppies in October The Courage of Shutting Up The courage of the shut mouth, in spite of artillery, the line pink and quiet, a worm basking, there are black discs behind it, the discs of outrage, and the outrage of a sky, the lined brain of it, the discs revolve, they ask to be heard, loaded as they are with accounts of bastardies, bastardies, usages, desertions, and doubleness, the needle journeying in its groove, silver beast between two dark canyons, a great surgeon, now a tattooist, tattooing over and over the same blue grievances, the snakes, the babies, the tits on mermaids and two-legged dream girls. The surgeon is quiet, he does not speak. He has seen too much death, his hands are full of it. So the discs of the brain revolve like the muzzles of cannon. Then there is that antique billhook, the tongue, indefatigable, purple. Must it be cut out? It has nine nails, it is dangerous, as the noise it flays from the air once it gets going. No, the tongue too has been put by, hung up in the library with engravings of Rangoon and the fox heads, the otter heads, the heads of dead rabbits. It is a marvelous object, the thing it has pierced in its time. How about the eyes? The eyes? The eyes? Mirrors can kill and talk, they are terrible rooms in which a torture goes on one can only watch. The face that lived in this mirror is the face of a dead man. Don't worry about the eyes. They may be white and shy. They are no stool pigeons. Their death rays folded like flags of a country no longer heard of. An obstinate independency, insolvent among the mountains. End of the courage of shutting up. Nick and the Candlestick I am a miner, the light turns blue. Waxy stalagmites drip and thicken. Tears the earthen womb exudes from its dead boredom. Black bat airs wrap me, raggy shawls, cold homicides, they weld to me like plums. Old cave of calcium icicles, old echoer. Even the newts are white, those holy joes. And the fish, the fish. Christ, they are panes of ice, a vice of knives, a Purana religion, drinking its first communion out of my live toes. The candle gulps and recovers its small altitude. Its yellows hearten. Oh love, how did you get here? Oh embryo, remembering, even in sleep, your crossed position. The blood blooms clean, in you, Ruby. The pain you wake to is not yours. Love, love, I have hung our cave with roses, with soft rugs, the last of Victoriana. Let the stars plummet to the dark address. Let the mercuric atoms that cripple drip into the terrible well. You are the one solid the spaces lean on, envious. You are the baby in the barn. End of Nick and the Candlestick. Burke Plage. One. This is the sea. Then, this is great abeyance. How the sun's poultice draws on my inflammation. Electrifyingly colored sherbets, scooped from the freeze by pale gulls, travel the air in scorched hands. Why is it so quiet? What are they hiding? I have two legs, and I move smilingly. 
A sandy damper kills the vibrations. It stretches for miles. The shrunk voice is waving and crutchless, half their old size. The lines of their eye, scalded by these bald surfaces. Boomerang like anchored elastics, hurting the owner. Is it any wonder he puts on dark glasses? Is it any wonder he affects the black cassock? Here he comes now, among the mackerel gatherers who wall up their backs against him. They are handling the black and green lozenges like parts of a body. The sea that crystallized these creeps away, many snaked, with a long hiss of distress. 2. This black boot has no mercy for anybody. Why should it? It is the hearse of a dead foot. The high, dead, toeless foot of this priest who plumbs the well of his book, the bent print bulging before him like scenery. Obscene bikinis hide in the dunes. Breasts and hips are confection of sugar, of little crystals, titillating the light, while a green pool opens its eye, sick with what it has swallowed. Limbs, images, shrieks. Behind the concrete bunkers, two lovers unstick themselves. A white sea crockery. What cupped size? What salt in the throat? And the onlooker, trembling, drawn like a long material through a still virulence, and a weed, hairy as privates. 3. On the balconies of the hotel, things are glittering. Things, things. Tubular steel wheelchairs, aluminum crutches, such salt sweetness. Why should I walk beyond the breakwater, spotty with barnacles? I am not a nurse, white and attendant. I am not a smile. These children are after something, with hooks and cries, and my heart too small to bandage their terrible faults. This is the side of a man, his red ribs, the nerves bursting like trees, and this is the surgeon, one merely eye, a facet of knowledge, on a striped mattress in one room. An old man is vanishing, there is no help in his weeping wife. Where are the eye stones, yellow and valuable? and the tongue, sapphire of ash. 4. A wedding cake face in a paper frill. How superior he is now. It is like possessing a saint. The nurses in their wing caps are no longer so beautiful. They are browning, like touched gardenias. The bed is rolled from the wall. This is what it is to be complete. It is horrible. Is he wearing pajamas on an evening suit, under the glued sheet from which his powdery beak rises so whitely, unbuffeted? They propped his jaw with a book until it stiffened and folded his hands that were shaking. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now the wash sheets fly in the sun. The pillowcases are sweetening. It is a blessing. It is a blessing. The long coffin of soap-colored oak. The curious bearers in the rod date engraving itself in silver with marvelous calm. 5. The gray sky lowers. The hills, like a green sea, run fold upon fold far off, concealing their hollows. The hollows in which rock the thoughts of the wife. Blunt, practical boats, full of dresses and hats and china and merry daughters, in the parlor of the stone house. One curtain is flickering from the open window, flickering and pouring, a pitiful candle. This is the tongue of the dead man. Remember, remember, how far he is now, his actions around him like living room furniture, like a decoy, as the pallors gather, the pallors of hands and neighborly faces, the elate pallors of flying iris. They are flying off into nothing, remember us. The empty benches of memory look over stones. Marble facades with blue veins and jelly glassfolds of daffodils. It is so beautiful up here. It is a stopping place. 6. The unnatural fatness of these lime leaves, pollarded green balls, the trees march to the church. The voice of the priest in thin air meets the corpse at the gate, addressing it while the hills roll the notes of the dead bell, a glitter of wheat and crude earth. What is the name of that color? Old blood and caked walls the sun heals. Old blood of limp stumps burnt hearts. 
the window with her black pocket book and three daughters, necessary among the flowers, and folds her face like fine linen, not to be spread again, while a sky wormy with put by smiles passes cloud after cloud, and the bride flowers expend a freshness, and the soul is a bride in a still place, and the groom is red and forgetful. He is featureless. Seven. Behind the glass of this car, the world purrs, shut off and gentle, and I am dark suited and still, a member of the party, gliding up in low gear behind the cart, and the priest is a vessel, a tarred fabric, sorry and dull, following the coffin on its flowery cart like a beautiful woman, a crest of breasts, eyelids and lips, storming the hilltop. Then, from the barren yard, the children smell the melt of shoe blacking. Their faces turning wordless and slow, their eyes opening on a wonderful thing. Six round black hats in the grass of a lozenge of wood, and a naked mouth, red and awkward. For a minute, the sky pours into the hole like plasma. There is no hope; it is given up. End of Burke Pledge. Gulliver, over your body the clouds go high, high and icily. And a little flat, as if they floated on a glass that was invisible, unlike swans having no reflections, unlike you with no strings attached, all cool, all blue, unlike you, you there on your back, eyes to the sky, the spider men have caught you, winding and twining their petty fetters, their bribes, so many silks, how they hate you, they converse in the valley of your fingers. They are inchworms. They would have you sleep in their cabinets. This toe and that toe, a relic. Step off, step off seven leagues, like those distances that revolve in Crivelli, untouchable. Let this eye be an eagle, the shadow of his lip, an abyss. End of Gulliver. Getting there. How far is it? How far is it now? The gigantic gorilla interior of the wheels move. They appall me. The terrible brains of Krupp black muzzles revolving. The sound punching out absence like cannon. It is Russia I have to get across. It is some war or other. I am dragging my body quietly through the straw of the box cars. Now is the time for bribery. What do wheels eat? These wheels fix their arcs like gods. The silver leash of the will. Inexorable, and their pride. All the gods know is destinations. I am a letter in the slot. I fly to a name, two eyes. Will there be fire? Will there be bread? Here there is such mud. It is a train stop. The nurses undergoing the faucet water. Its veils, veils in a nunnery, touching their wounded. The men, the blood still pumps forward. Legs, arms piled outside. The tent of unending cries. A hospital of dolls, and the men. What is left of the men pumped ahead by these pistons, this blood into the next mile, the next hour, dynasty of broken arrows. How far is it? There is mud on my feet, thick, red, and slipping. It is Adam's side. This earth I rise from, and I in agony. I cannot undo myself, and the train is steaming, steaming, and breathing. Its teeth ready to roll like a devil's. There is a minute at the end of it, a minute, a dewdrop. How far is it? It is so small. The place I am getting to. Why are there these obstacles? The body of this woman, charred skirts and death mask mourned by religious figures, by garlanded children, and now detonations, thunder and guns. The fire is between us. Is there no still place? Turning and turning in the middle air, untouched and untouchable, the train is dragging itself. It is screaming, an animal insane for the destination, the blood spot, the face at the end of the flare. I shall bury the wounded like pupas. I shall count and bury the dead. Let their souls writhe in a dew, incense in my track. The carriages rock. They are cradles, and I, stepping from this skin of old bandages, boredoms. Old faces, step to you from the black cart of lead, pure as a baby. End 
of getting there. Medusa. Off that land spit of stony mouth plugs, eyes rolled by white sticks, ears cupping the sea's incoherences, you house your unnerving head, god ball, lens of mercies, your stooges plying their wild cells in my keel's shadow, pushing by like hearts, red stigmata at the very center, riding the riptide to the nearest point of departure, dragging their Jesus hair. Did I escape, I wonder? My mind winds to you, old barnacled umbilicus, Atlantic cable, keeping itself, it seems, in a state of miraculous repair. In any case, you are always there, tremulous breath at the end of my line, curve of water up leaping to my water rod, dazzling and grateful, touching and sucking. I didn't call you, I didn't call you at all. Nevertheless, nevertheless, you steamed to me over the sea fat and red, a placenta paralyzing the kicking lovers, cobra light squeezing the breath from the blood cells of the fuchsia. I could draw no breath, dead and moneyless, overexposed like an x-ray. Who do you think you are? A communion wafer? Blueberry Mary? I shall take no bite of your body, bottle in which I live. Ghastly Vatican, I am sick to death of hot salt. Green and eunuchs, your wishes hiss at my sins. Off, off, illy tentacle. There is nothing between us. End of Medusa. Perda. Jade, stone of the side, the agonized side of Green Adam. I smile, cross-legged, enigmatical, shifting my clarities, so valuable. How the sun polishes the shoulder. And should the moon, my indefatigable cousin, rise with her cancerous pallors, dragging trees, little bushy polyps, little nets, my visibilities hide. I gleam like a mirror. At this facet the bridegroom arrives, lord of the mirrors. It is himself he guides in among these silk screens, these rustling appurtenances. I breathed and the mouth veil stirs its curtain. My eye veil is a concentration of rainbows. I am his. Even in his absence, I revolve in my sheath of impossibles. Priceless and quiet among these parakeets, macaws, O oh chatterers, attendants of the eyelash. I shall unloose one feather, like the peacock. Attendants of the lip, I shall unloose one note, shattering the chandelier of air that all day plies its crystals, a million ignorance, attendance, attendance, and at his next step I shall unloose, I shall unloose, from the small jeweled doll he guards like a heart, the lioness, the shriek in the bath, the cloak of holes. End of Perda The Moon and the Yew Tree this is the light of the mind, cold and planetary. The trees of the mind are black, the light is blue. The grasses unload their griefs on my feet as if I were God, prickling my ankles and murmuring of their humility. Fumy, spiritous mists inhabit this place, separated from my house by a row of headstones. I simply cannot see where there is to go. The moon is no door, it is a face in its own right white as a knuckle and terribly upset. It drags the sea after it like a dark crime. It is quiet, with the old grape of complete despair. I live here. Twice on Sunday, the bells startle the sky, eight great tongues affirming the resurrection. At the end, they soberly bong out their names. The yew tree points up. It has a gothic shape. The eyes lift after it and find the moon. The moon is my mother. She is not sweet like Mary. Her blue garments unloose small bats and owls. How I would like to believe in tenderness, the face of the effigy, gentled by candles. Bending, on me in particular, its mild eyes. I have fallen a long way. Clouds are flowering, blue and mystical over the face of the stars. Inside the church, the saints will be all blue. Floating on their delicate feet over the cold pews, their hands and faces stiff with holiness. The moon sees nothing of this. She is bald and wild. 
and the message of the yew tree is blackness. Blackness and silence. End of the moon and the yew tree. A birthday present. What is this behind the veil? Is it ugly? Is it beautiful? It is shimmering. Has it breasts? Has it edges? I am sure it is unique. I am sure it is just what I want. When I'm quiet at my cooking, I feel it looking. I feel it thinking. Is this the one I am to appear for? Is this the elect one? The one with black eye pits and a scar? Measuring the flower, cutting off the surplus, adhering to rules, to rules, to rules. Is this the one for the Annunciation? <laughs> My God, what a laugh! But it shimmers. It does not stop. And I think it wants me. I would not mind if it was bones or a pearl button. I do not want much of a present anyway this year. After all, I am alive only by accident. I would have killed myself gladly that time any possible way. Now there are these veils, shimmering like curtains. The diaphanous satins of a January window, white as babies' bedding and glittering with dead breath. Oh, ivory! It must be a tusk there, a ghost column. Can you not see I do not mind what it is? Can you not give it to me? Do not be ashamed. I do not mind if it is small. Do not be mean. I am ready for enormity. Let us sit down to it, one on either side. Admiring the gleam, the glaze, the mere variety of it. Let us eat our last supper at it, like a hospital plate. I know why you will not give it to me. You are terrified the world will go up in a shriek and your head with it. Bossed, brazen, an antique shield, a marvel to your great-grandchildren. Do not be afraid. It is not so. I will only take it and go aside quietly. You will not even hear me opening it. No paper crackle, no falling ribbons, no scream at the end. I do not think you credit me with this discretion. If you only knew how the veils were killing my days, to you they are only transparencies, clear air. But my God, the clouds are like cotton, armies of them. They are carbon monoxide. Sweetly, sweetly I breathe in, filling my veins with invisibles, with the million probable motes that tick the years off my life. You are silver suited for the occasion, oh adding machine. Is it impossible for you to let something go and have it go whole? Must you stamp each piece in purple? Must you kill what you can? There is this one thing I want today, and only you can give it to me. It stands at my window, big as the sky. It breathes from my sheets, the cold, dead center where split lives congeal and stiffen to history. Let it not come by the mail, finger by finger. Let it not come by word of mouth. I should be sixty by the time the whole of it was delivered, and too numb to use it. Only let down the veil, the veil, the veil. If it were death, I would admire the deep gravity of it, its timeless eyes. I would know you were serious. There would be a nobility then, there would be a birthday, and the knife not carve, but enter, pure and clean as the cry of a baby, and the universe slide from my side. End of a birthday present. Letter in November. Love, the world suddenly turns, turns colors, the streetlight splits through the rat's tail, pods of the laburnum at nine in the morning. It is the Arctic, this little black circle, with its tan silk grasses, babies' hair. There is a green in the air, soft, delectable. Its cushions me lovingly. I am flushed and warm. I think I may be enormous. I am so stupidly happy. My Wellington squelching and squelching through the beautiful red. This is my property. Two times a day I pace it. Sniffing the barbarous holly with its viridian scallops, pure iron, and the wall of old corpses. I love them. I love them like history. The apples are golden. Imagine it, my seventy trees holding their gold ruddy balls in a thick gray death soup. 
their million gold leaves metal and breathless. O oh, love, O oh, celibate, nobody but me walks the waste high wet. The irreplaceable golds bleed and deepen the mouths of Thermopylae. End of letter in November. Amnesiac. No use, no use now. Begging, recognize. There is nothing to do with such a beautiful blank but smooth it. Name, house, car keys. The little toy wife, erased. Sigh, sigh. Four babies and a cocker. Nurse is the size of worms and a minute doctor tuck him in. Old happenings peel from his skin. Down the drain with all of it. Hugging his pillow like the red-headed sister he never dared to touch. He dreams of a new one. Baron. The lot are barren. And of another color. How they will travel, travel, travel. Scenery sparking off their brother's sister rears. A comet tail. And money the sperm fluid of it all. The nurse brings in a green drink. One a blue. They rise on either side of him like stars. The two drinks flame and foam. Oh sister, mother, wife. Sweet leth is my life. I am never, never, never coming home. End of Amnesiac The Rival If the moon smiled, she would resemble you. You leave the same impression of something beautiful, but annihilating. Both of you are great light borrowers. Her O mouth grieves at the world. Yours is unaffected. And your first gift is making stone out of everything. I wake to a mausoleum. You are here, taking your fingers on the marble table, looking for cigarettes. Spiteful as a woman, but not so nervous. And dying to say something unanswerable. The moon, too, abases her subjects. But in daytime, she is ridiculous. Your dissatisfactions, on the other hand, arrive through the mail slot with loving regularity. White and blank, expansive as carbon monoxide. No day is safe from news of you. Walking about in Africa, maybe, but thinking of me. End of the rival. Daddy, you do not do, you do not do any more black shoe in which I have lived like a foot for thirty years, poor and white, barely daring to breathe or a chew. Daddy, I have had to kill you. You died before I had time. Marble heavy, a bag full of God, ghastly statue with one gray toe, big as a Frisco seal, and a head in the freakish Atlantic, where it pours bean green over blue, and the water is off beautiful Nosset. I used to pray to recover you. Ach, du. In the German tongue, in the Polish town scraped flat by the roller of wars, wars, wars. But the name of the town is common. My Pollock friend says there are a dozen or two. So I never could tell where you put your foot, your root. I never could talk to you. The tongue stuck in my jaw. It stuck in a barbed wire snare. Itch, itch, itch. I could hardly speak. I thought every German was you. And the language obscene. An engine, an engine, chuffing me off like a Jew. A Jew to Dachau, Auschwitz, Belsen. I began to talk like a Jew. I think I may well be a Jew. The snarls of the Tyrol, the clear beer of Vienna. And not very pure or true. With my gypsy ancestress and my weird luck, and my Tarek pack and my Tarek pack, I may be a bit of a Jew. I have always been scared of you, with your luft waff, your goobly goo, and your neat mustache, and your Aryan eye, bright blue. Panzer man, panzer man, oh you. Not God, but a swastika, so black no sky could squeak through. Every woman adores a fascist, the boot in the face. The brute, brute heart of a brute like you. You stand at the blackboard, Daddy, in the picture I have of you. A cleft in your chin instead of your foot. 
but no less a devil for that. No, not any less the black man who bit my pretty red heart in two. I was ten when they buried you. And twenty, I tried to die and get back, back, back to you. I thought even the bones would do, but they pulled me out of the sack and they stuck me together with glue. And then I knew what to do. I made a model of you, a man in black with a mankampf look and a love of the rack and the screw. And I said I do, I do. So, Daddy, I'm finally through. The black telephone's off at the root. The voices just can't worm through. If I've killed one man, I've killed two. The vampire who said he was you, and draw my blood for a year, seven years, if you want to know. Daddy, you can lie back now. There's a stake in your fat black heart, and the villagers never liked you. They are dancing and stamping on you. They always knew it was you. Daddy, Daddy, you bastard, I'm through. End of Daddy Yo Clown-like, happiest on your hands, feet to the stars and moon scald, gild like a fish. A common sense thumbs down on the dodo's mode, wrapped up in yourself like a spool, trawling your dark as owls do, mute as a turnip from the 4th of July to all fools' day. Oh, high guys are my little loaf, vague as fog and looked for like a male, farther off than Australia, bent back atlas, our traveled prawn, snug as a bud and at home like a sprat in a pickled jug. A creel of eels, all ripples, jumpy as a Mexican bean, right like a well-done sum, a clean slate with your own face on. End of your Fever 103 degrees. Pure? What does it mean? The tongues of hell are dull, dull as the triple tongues of dull, fat Cerberus, who wheezes at the gate, Incapable of licking clean the agui tendon, the sin, the sin. The tinder cries, the indelible smell of a snuffed candle. Love, love, the low smokes roll from me like Isidora's scarves. I'm in a fright one scarf will catch and anchor in the wheel. Such yellow sullen smokes make their own element. They will not rise but trundle round the globe, choking the aged and the meek, the weak, hothouse baby in its crib, the ghastly orchid hanging its hanging garden in the air. Devilish leopard, radiation turned it white and killed it in an hour, greasing the bodies of adulterers like Hiroshima ash and eating in. The sin, the sin. Darling, all night I have been flickering off, on, off, on. The sheets grow heavy as a lecher's kiss. Three days, three nights, lemon water, chicken water, water make me wretch. I am too pure for you or anyone. Your body hurts me as the world hurts God. I am a lantern, my head a moon of Japanese paper my gold-beaten skin, infinitely delicate and infinitely expensive. Does not my heat astound you? And my light, all by myself I am a huge camellia, glowing and coming and going, flush on flush. I think I am going up. I think I may rise, the beads of hot metal fly. And I, love, I am a pure acetylene, virgin, attended by roses, by kisses, by cherubim, by whatever these pink things mean. Not you, nor him, nor him, nor him. Myself's dissolving old whore petticoats to paradise. End of fever 103 degrees. The Bee Meeting Who are these people at the bridge to meet me? They are the villagers. The rector, the midwife, the sexton, the agent for bees. In my sleeveless summery dress I have no protection. And they are all gloved and covered. 
Why didn't nobody tell me? They are smiling and taking out veils tacked to ancient hats. I am nude as a chicken neck. Does nobody love me? Yes, here is the secretary of bees with a white sharp smock, buttoning the cuffs at my wrists and the slit from my neck to my knees. Now I am milkweed silk. The bees will not notice. They will not smell my fear, my fear, my fear. Which is the rector now? Is it that man in black? Which is the midwife? Is that her blue coat? Everybody is nodding a square black head. They are knights in visors, breastplates of cheesecloth knotted under the armpits. Their smiles and their voices are changing. I am led through a bean field. Strips of tinfoil winking like people, feather dusters fanning their hands in a sea of bean flowers. Creamy bean flowers with black eyes and leaves like bored hearts. Is it blood clots the tendrils are dragging up that string? No, no, it is scarlet flowers that will one day be edible. Now they are giving me a fashionable white straw Italian hat and a black veil that molds to my face. They are making me one of them. They are leading me to the shorn grove, the circle of hives. Is it the hawthorn that smells so sick? The barren body of Hawthorne, etherizing its children. Is it some operation that is taking place? Is it the surgeon my neighbors are waiting for? This apparition in a green helmet, shining gloves and white suit. Is it the butcher, the grocer, the postman, someone I know? I cannot run, I am rooted, and the gorse hurts me with its yellow purses, its spiky armory. I cannot run without having to run forever. The white hive is snug as a virgin, sealing off her brood cells, her honey, and quietly humming. Smoke rolls and scarves in the grove. The mind of the hive thinks this is the end of everything. Here they come, the outriders, on their hysterical elastics. If I stand very still, they will think I am cow parsley, a gullible head untouched by their animosity. Not even nodding, a personage in a hedgerow. The villagers open the chambers. They are hunting the queen. Is she hiding? Is she eating honey? She is very clever. She is old, old, old. She must live another year, and she knows it. While in their finger joint cells, the new virgins dream of a duel they will win inevitably. A curtain of wax dividing them from the bride flight. The upflight of the murderess into a heaven that loves her. The villagers are moving the virgins. There will be no killing. The old queen does not show herself. Is she so ungrateful? I am exhausted. I am exhausted. Pillar of white in a blackout of knives. I am the magician's girl who does not flinch. The villagers are untying their disguises. They are shaking hands. Whose is that long white box in the grove? What have they accomplished? Why am I cold? End of the bee meeting. The arrival of the bee box. I ordered this, this clean wood box, square as a chair and almost too heavy to lift. I would say it was the coffin of a midget or a square baby, were there not such a din in it. The box is locked. It is dangerous. I have to live with it overnight, and I can't keep away from it. There are no windows so I can't see what is in there. There is only a little grid, no exit. I put my eye to the grid. It is dark, dark, with a swarmy feeling of African hands, minute and shrunk for export, black on black, angrily crambling. How can I let them out? It is the noise that appalls me most of all, the unintelligible syllables. It is like a Roman mob, small, taken one by one, but my God, together! I lay my ear to furious Latin. I am not a Caesar. I have simply ordered a box of maniacs. They can be sent back. They can die. I need feed them nothing. I am the owner. I wonder how hungry they are. I wonder if they would forget me if I just undid the locks and stood back and turned into a tree. There is the laburnum. 
its blood colonnades, and the petticoats of the cherry. They might ignore me immediately, in my moon suit and funeral veil. I am no source of honey, so why should they turn on me? Tomorrow I will be sweet God. I will set them free. The box is only temporary. End of the arrival of the bee box. Stings. Barehanded, I hand the combs. The man in white smiles, barehanded. Our cheesecloth gauntlets neat and sweet. The throats of our wrists brave lilies. He and I have a thousand clean cells between us. Eight combs of yellow cups, and the hive itself a teacup, white with pink flowers on it. With excessive love, I enameled it, thinking sweetness, sweetness. Brood cells gray as the fossils of shells terrify me. They seem so old. What am I buying? Wormy mahogany? Is there any queen at all in it? If there is, she is old. Her wings torn shawls, her long body rubbed of its plush, poor and bare and unqueenly and even shameful. I stand in a column of winged, unmiraculous women, honey drudgers. I am no drudge, though for years I have eaten dust and dried plates with my dense hair, and seen my strangeness evaporate, but dew from dangerous skin. Will they hate me? These women who only scurry, whose news is the open cherry, the open clover? It is almost over. I am in control. Here is my honey machine. It will work without thinking, opening in spring, like an industrious virgin, to scour the creaming crests as the moon, for its ivory powders, scours the sea. A third person is watching. He has nothing to do with the bee seller or with me. Now he is gone, in eight great bounds, a great scapegoat. Here is his slipper, here is another, and here is the square of white linen he wore instead of a hat. He was sweet. The sweat of his efforts, a grain tugging the world to fruit, the bees found him out, molding onto his lips like lies, complicating his features. They thought death was worth it, but I have a self to recover, a queen. Is she dead? Is she sleeping? Where has she been, with a lion red body, her wings of glass? Now she is flying, more terrible than she ever was. Red scar in the sky, red comet over the engine that killed her. The mausoleum. The wax house. End of stings. Wintering. This is the easy time. There is nothing doing. I have walled the midwife's extractor. I have my honey. Six jars of it. Six cat's eyes in the wine cellar. Wintering in a dark without window at the heart of the house. Next to the last tenant's rancid jam and the bottles of empty glitters, so so and so's gin. This is the room I have never been in. This is the room I can never breathe in. The black bunched in there like a bat. No light, but the torch and its faint Chinese yellow on appalling objects. Black asinity, decay, possession. It is they who own me, neither cruel nor different, only ignorant. This is the time of hanging on for the bees. The bees so slowly I hardly know them, filing like soldiers to the syrup tin to make up for the honey I've taken. Tate and Lyle keeps them going, the refined snow. It is Tate and Lyle they live on instead of flowers. They take it. The cold sets in. Now they ball in a mass, black mind, against all that white. The smell of the snow is white. It spreads itself out, a mile-long body of mycin, into which, on warm days, they can only carry their dead. The bees are all women, maids, and the long royal lady. They have got rid of the men, the blunt, clumsy stumblers, the boys. Winter is for women. The woman, still at her knitting, at the cradle of Spanish walnut, her body a bulb in the cold and too dumb to think. Will the hive survive? Will the gladiolas succeed in banking their fires to enter another year? What will they taste of? The Christmas roses? The bees are flying. They taste the spring. End of wintering. 
Appendix 1, The Swarm. The B poem The Swarm appears on the contents page of the Ariel and Other Poems manuscript with parentheses around it in Sylvia Plath's own hand. She did not include the poem with the manuscript itself. Ted Hughes included it in the US version of Ariel when it was first published in 1966. This restored edition maintains Sylvia Plath's editorial decision and does not include the poem in the main body of Ariel and Other Poems. The poem follows along with a facsimile of typescript draft. The Swarm Something is shooting at something in our town. A dull palm, palm in the Sunday street. Jealousy can open the blood. It can make black roses. What are they shooting at? It is you the knives are out for. At Waterloo, Waterloo, Napoleon. The hump of Elba on your short back. At the snow, marshalling its brilliant cutlery, mask after mask, saying shh, shh. These are chess people you play with, still figures of ivory. The mud squirms with throats, stepping stones for French boot soles. The gilt and pink domes of Russia melt and float off in the furnace of greed. Clouds, clouds. So the swarm balls and deserts seventy feet up in a black pine tree. It must be shot down. Pum! Pum! So dumb it thinks bullets are thunder. It thinks they are the voice of God, condoning the beak, the claw, the grin of the dog, yellow haunched, a pack dog, grinning over its bone of ivory like the pack, the pack, like everybody. The bees have got so far, seventy feet high. Russia, Poland, and Germany. The mild hills, the same old magenta fields shrunk to a penny, spun into a river, the river crossed. The bees argue, in their black ball, a flying hedgehog all prickles. The man with gray hands stands under the honeycomb of their dream, the hive station where trains, faithful to their steel arcs, leave and arrive, and there is no end to the country. Palm, palm, they fall dismembered, to a tod of ivy. So much for the chariots, the outriders, the grand army. A red tatter, Napoleon, the last badge of victory. The swarm is knocked into a cocked straw hat. Elba, Elba, bleb on the sea. The white busts of marshals, admirals, generals, worming themselves into niches. Flow instructive this is. The dumb, banded bodies walking the plank draped with Mother Francis's upholstery into a new mausoleum, an ivory palace, a croth pine. The man with gray hands smiles, the smile of a man of business, intensely practical. They are not hands at all, but asbestos receptacles. Palm, palm, they would have killed me. Stings big as drawing pins. It seems bees have a notion of honor, a black, intractable mind. Napoleon is pleased. He is pleased with everything. Oh, Europe. Oh, ton of honey. End of the Swarm End of Aerial Poems by Sylvia Plath This has been an audio recording by me, Jordan Barclay. I'm doing this for free to help anyone with assistance on this. If you enjoyed the production of this audiobook or this collection of poems, which is what it's supposed to be called, uh, give this video a like if you enjoyed the production. I'm saying the same thing multiple times. If you have any requests on what I should read next, feel free to comment below, whether it's poems, short stories, novels, comics, anything. Comment below and I'll see if I can get... Uh, <coughs> and I'll see if I can get to it as soon as possible. And if you want to be updated on daily and weekly audio recordings, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications to stay updated. Alright guys, this is, wow, this, this collection is insane. I loved every bit of this. Well, I'll see you later. Have a good day, guys. I'm out. Peace.